In this video, we're going to look at simulating the aerodynamic flow around a bullet as it travels through the air. So, first of all, dragging CFX into the project workspace, right clicking on Design Model Geometry, and opening that up. So, beginning by selecting the XY plane, viewing from Z, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. And just create a wind tunnel style geometry which you can see from any of the videos in this channel select a new sketch and just leave some room upstream and the majority of the space downstream i'm going to extrude this and i'm going to extrude it in opposite directions in the z direction so when it says normal, we're just going to change that to both and symmetric. And we want it to approximately align with the width here. So the width is about 3 meters. So I'm going to say both 1.5 meters. Just hit generate and rotate. And we can view that from the end. And we've got an approximately square shape. We're going to create our bullet geometry on the yz plane and extrude it in the x direction so just viewing from negative x and zooming in to the origin just selecting z y here and then sketching and then circle so just selecting so we've got that point option which will be our origin and create some diameter and just give that an actual value with um, with the tool there. So the diameter of our bullet is going to be about one centimetre. So let's say one point two centimetres, and we're going to extrude it in the positive x. Sorry, extrude it and make sure we cut geometry. So that's going to be cut two centimeters into the direction of positive x so once you're happy with those settings just select generate and finally what we're going to do is just round the front end of the bullet so just to make this easily viewable we're just going to hit that front face press f8 and then view the geometry here so you can see our approximate shape, we just need to perform some level of rounding on that front edge. So that can be done simply with a fixed radius blend. And in this case, I've just given a fixed radius blend of five millimeters. So you can see it mostly rounds that off. We can maybe make some extra additions to six mil, but this is suitable for our case. So if you just want to save that, and next we'll create a mesh refinement box for the simulation. So again, just viewing from the top, you can see our computational domain is actually quite large for our purpose. So all we want to do is just make sure that we've got some level of mesh refinement in this region. It doesn't have to be uh, particularly accurate. So what I'm going to do is again just select xy select a sketch select that sketch and then drag and drop a refinement region in the wake of the vehicle so you can see it comes out there in the order of about a meter long and again not being too concerned about symmetry it's purely for demonstration so extrude apply and add as frozen just making sure we use both directions so normal in the symmetric directions and again have it about 0 0.2 0 0.3 meters in height so you can see that's appeared as a another body so we can just save this and open up the meshing software so in ANSYS meshing we're going to first of all just 
add sizing to our bullets. If you remember, it was about 1.2 centimeters in diameter. So we'll just create a surface size there. So selecting from the Z direction and finding our bullet using the box select tool. There you go. You can see it's both picked up on the refinement box and the bullet. So I'll just do that again. Uh, this time we've only selected the bullet and our element size is going to be the order of uh, one millimeter. So just generate that and see if it's sufficient. So you see what we've got here is defeaturing because the mesh is too large. So we can just make the cells an order of magnitude smaller. And the geometry is only really small, so we can actually get away with doing this and not cause it excessive computational cost. So after some trial and error, it was found that three times 10 to the minus four meter for the self size on the surface of the bullet was sufficient. So just about to change the size of the refinement box cells. So again, right clicking on mesh and sizing and our geometry is going to be the whole computational domain. And what we need to do here is change element size to body of influence. And that's where we select the mesh refinement region to be our body, which you can see there it's been picked up. And then from here, we can change the cells to be about a centimeter. And if we just hit generate and wait for that to finish. So just viewing the simulations mesh here. So selecting a section plane and approximately trying to drag it down the middle of the domain. It's quite challenging to pick out the geometry of the bullet because obviously it's so small compared to the domain. But you can see the refinement region there is um, effectively captured. So I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm going to close meshing and then update and open up CFX Pre. So within CF X pre we need to set the boundary conditions so I'll just begin with the outside walls and just selecting location and then the usual four walls around the outside and here and here and I'm going to leave these as free slip walls to make sure the Velocity doesn't um, slow down on them and create boundary layers. Then we're going to need to uh, create the inlet. So again, just selecting boundary, call it inlet, and select that front wall there. So currently it's only giving me the option of subsonic. So I'm going to create a normal speed of 500 meters per second with a low intensity for turbulence. I'm gonna rotate and I'm gonna right click and select the opening. I'm just gonna call it outlet, but it will be an opening condition. So select the box and then select the surface. And just selecting that as zero static pressure. And finally, this boundary condition here will just be the uh, bullet itself. So what we need to do is double click default domain. We need to make sure we're including um, total energy here. So we've got some turbulence model. We're going to include um, high, speed, high speed compressible wall flux heat model. We've not got any combustion. We're not going to got any radiation and initialization we can leave as it is. So what that's going to do is cause us some issues with respect to our boundary conditions. So just going into our inlet, so static temperature, we can just leave that as 25 degrees Celsius. So because we've got high speed compressible heat transfer model is not enabled for an incompressible fluid, we need to make sure air is brought in as an ideal gas. So just hitting apply there. 
what we can do is go back to inlet and that should allow us to generate that as a supersonic flow and inlet's going to need to be relative static pressure of zero pascals just closing this and our outlet also needs to be supersonic so from here I'm going to leave the remainder of the solver controls alone and we're just going to shut save and open up solver manager so once you've opened up cfx solver manager just hit double precision large problem and mpi local parallel add your number of processors and select start run so in cfd post we can just begin a first look at the results so viewing from the negative x direction viewing from the negative y direction we can just create a quick plane and create that about the origin just make sure we're looking at zx for our slice and we've appropriately picked up the geometry of the bullet there you can see some slight mark i'll zoom in in a moment and just looking at uh different variables so pressure is quite an interesting one here just creating that to local so we can see what's actually on the plane and just zooming in you can see of course your stagnation uh some element of shock and then your wake can view our density. So there we're seeing a significant amount of compression again, as you'd imagine, in the stagnation region, and of course the opposite in the wake. There's quite a significant amount of um, thermal behavior of course as we'd expect with uh, such a high speed flow so you can see we've got approximately 400 kelvin in the stagnation and the awakes and you can really see there's quite a lot of symmetry there in the wake which i wasn't expecting from um, a simulation with this level of accuracy but of course we're not really taking into account the full behavior of the flow it's not a particularly good um well there's no real boundary layer refinement here so if we just zoom in you can see we've not got prism layer cells but we have got some level of refinement close to the wall so we could capture this even better by um, performing some high quality mesh refinement there I'll just finish off with having a little look at the Y plus for our solver. So viewing the surface of the object and just viewing Y plus there. So if we take that as local and hit apply, we've actually got quite good refinement again. So you can see these regions, we've got Y pluses of approximately one and maxima in the order of 200 so actually that's relatively safe within um, usual requirements so i think that's actually worked out incredibly well so hopefully that's helpful hopefully that's interesting for you so that's just a quick video on simulating compressible flow around a bullet